cartoons are often beloved for their wonderful characters and wacky hijinks, but no less important are the places they hang out. If I were an eccentric rich person, as opposed to just an eccentric person, I would have a really cool secret lair hidden behind a bookcase in my house. And a lot of the amenities for my secret lair would be inspired by cartoons. So let's look at some of the best sources of inspiration for a home base. My name is Tim, and today on Channel Frederator, we're counting down the top 10 bases and layers in cartoons. Let's get started. Also, I didn't put the Batcave on this list. I know I'm gonna be asked, where's the Batcave, Tim? One, I'm not convinced that the Batcave is that great, but two, it's from a comic book, and it's too easy to just go from comic books. We're not gonna do that. We're gonna reach a little harder. Number 10, the International Secret Intelligence Services Headquarters from Archer. This is a hard one to talk about thanks to the unfortunate naming of the International Secret Intelligence Services. Yes, the agency in Archer is named ISIS, and it's even spelled the same way. Names aside, I love this headquarters just based on how absurd it is juxtaposed to the laundry shops on the lower floor. Yes, there's a laundry shop on the first floor of the building because Mallory Archer needed funds to keep the lights on. It's pretty cut and dry as far as an intelligence building is concerned, but there's a charm about that. Archer never goes out of its way to make its HQ seem cool. Quite the opposite, in fact. I'm sure that, for a lot of people, the HQ building looks familiar because it's filled with a lot of the same cubicles and office plants that pervade the corporate world. Except one of the employees is married to a Hatsune Miku ripoff. Number 9. Dexter's Lab from Dexter's Lab. If there was ever a period of time I wanted to be a scientist, it was because of this show, and the coolest lab ever. Think about it, the show isn't called Dexter, although that is a show now, or The Adventures of Dexter and Dee Dee, it's called Dexter's Lab. It had every cool science gizmo you could ever want. A talking computer, a time machine, cool robots, a psychic monkey that saves the day, and secret passages. Oh my gosh, the secret passages. Mysteriously, they can keep everyone but Dee Dee out. My personal favorite is the one hiding under his rug in the opening title sequence. This lab is the perfect place to tighten the same lug nut over and over again. In all seriousness, a lot of shots of Dexter inventing are tightening a lug nut on random stuff. You would think that a boy genius could just invent a set of power tools that would fit his tiny hands. It would give him a lot more time to, you know, invent, or at least devise a way to keep his sister out. Number 8. Yzma's Lair from the Emperor's New Groove Another in a long line of prestigious secret labs, Cusco's advisor Yzma has a sinister lab from which she plots to topple their faux Aztec empire. All the goodies an evil genius needs. All sorts of vials and potions and poisons that could bring down Cusco, if only Krunk was a little more competent. Don't be mad at Krunk though, he has a heart of gold, and is the reason you go back and watch that movie over and over again. Also, as much as it's played for a gag, it has the most important feature a lair can have booby traps. Why does she even have that lever? So that people that are trying to intrude are dropped into a pool of alligators. I'm sure some people don't feel like this lair is a very good secret lab, since Cusco knows about its existence without anyone telling him. But he's the emperor. It makes sense for him to know a lot of things. Besides, I'm willing to forgive a lot considering it has a roller coaster built into its entrance. Number 7. The Monarch's Flying Cocoon from the Venture Brothers. This list was bound to include an airship in some form or fashion. There's probably cooler airships out there than the Monarch's Cocoon. It's pretty stupid, honestly, but that's where a lot of the charm comes from. It doesn't try and be cool, and in that way, it's one of the more honest layers out there. The monarch, conversely, constructs an entire mobile cocoon fortress from which his humble schemes can transform into beautiful plans for evil. It's not that imposing, or sinister, or cool, and the butterfly theme doesn't really inspire fear or terror, but it gives us a good idea of what the monarch is all about, namely butterflies. And that counts for something. Number 6. The Portal Room from Gravity Falls Dexter's lab has a lot of cool trappings. Ford's, and later Stan's, secret lair has a lot of the same sciency fun, but with a cool retro vibe and hints of the occult. The perfect room to encounter Bill Cipher's home dimension. My love for this lair is almost exclusively due to its visual design. It fits so well in with the mystery of the show, and does a really cool job of making me excited to see what's coming up next. It's one thing to see Stan enter a secret passage behind a vending machine. It's another altogether to see him open a portal to a hell dimension. By nature, I'm not a subtle person, and for me Gravity Falls was, and still largely is, a comedy show. I ignored all the mystery and intrigue until the first season finale forced me to take it seriously. And with the way this place looks, with all its alien symbols and cool sci-fi stuff, made me 100% okay with the new direction, and that's saying something. It takes a lot to pull me away from comedy, and the coolness of this layer did exactly that. Number 5. Lion's Mane from Steven Universe If you ever wanted to leave something in a place it wouldn't be disturbed, 
disturbed, I would recommend a pocket dimension inside the mane of a large pink lion. If you haven't seen Steven Universe, that sentence probably sounds bonkers. But that's why it's a great hideaway. No one knows Lion's origins, much less why he has a magical room located in his neck. Presumably it has something to do with Rose, since she left a sword and VHS tape for Steven in there. It's super cool because it's also portable. Lion can follow Steven around and carry things without slowing down. Not only that, but he can be ridden, open up portals, beam up to the moon, fight, interpret complex commands, and the list goes on and on. Nothing that cool can exist without drawbacks, though. There's no oxygen in Lion's mane, so Steven can't leap inside and avoid danger or hide for that long. If he could, Lion would be the single most powerful entity on this entire show. Even still, it's one of the cooler secret layers in cartoons. Number four, Mojo Jojo's lair from the Powerpuff Girls. The city of Townsville really should have been located away from a volcano. I mean, it's dangerous, sure. Nobody in city planning apparently heard of the city of Pompeii, but also volcanoes tend to attract the wrong people. Heck, in the episode where the girls travel to the past, they show that bad teenage kids tend to hang out around the volcano. Even worse than teenage punks, though, is evil geniuses. Super intelligent monkey Mojo Jojo makes his lair at the top of Townsville Volcano Mountain. It's not secretive as far as lairs go, but I think there's a reason that the police or the girls don't storm his house and kick his teeth in. He holds back the volcano from erupting and destroying the whole town. Even though he's an evil genius that wants nothing but the destruction of the Powerpuff Girls, he is responsible for the town's safety. It turns out that the best way to keep doing evil in your mountain fortress is by doing an immense amount of good. Number three, the treehouse from codename Kids Next Door. Another triumph of 2x4 technology, the Kids Next Door treehouse is much more than just a treehouse. It's an unassailable fortress that stands tall against adult tyranny. The treehouse has a lot of really cool functions that other layers on this list have, all framed within a symbol of kid freedom. I really like all the surprises the treehouse holds. Sure, it has a talking computer and defense systems, and that's all well and good, but this treehouse is also a lot bigger than it looks, and that's pretty big considering that part of it is built out of a giant ship. In the episode where they flush number three's goldfish, numbers two and four travel across abandoned sections of the treehouse in a not too subtle Lord of the Rings adventure. This treehouse is so big that there are lost civilizations living inside it. There's a whole tribe of guinea pigs living in the treehouse. It's hard not to include a base that has modern technology and entire civilizations on a list. Also, I never lived in a place that had big enough trees to make a treehouse, so I get to experience it vicariously through Codename Kids Next Door. Number two, Scar's Lair from The Lion King. Some lairs are created with function in mind. Others focus more on form. Scar's Lair is in the latter category, with the most metal lair ever. Scar hangs out in an elephant graveyard, and elephants seem to have a thing against burying their dead, instead content to let them pile up in the most hellish landscape ever devised in a Disney movie. Seriously, what's with those weird geothermal vents they shove Zazu into. Is that a thing that occurs? Is that just in Africa? Is it coming from the core of the earth? It'd be like a million degrees. The elephant graveyard just screams evil. Scar's just lounging around inside the remains of dead animals. It gets played off a bit in the movie, but think about it. Simba slides down a spine of a dead creature, presumably with as much sentience as he had. They try to walk into his skull to see if it still has brains. Did anyone check in with the animation department to just, you know, make sure things were going okay. Alarming visuals aside, this makes for a really, really cool lair. And number one, the island of Draco from American Dragon, Jake Long. I'm not going to lie to you. All of the dragons in American Dragon, Jake Long, are terrible people. They're a set of people on planet Earth imbued with the awesome power of dragons and do nothing with it. Oh, sure, they pay lip service to the idea of protecting the magical world, but what about the world at large? They have some intense magic that could be a positive force in the world, but no, can't let humans know magic exists. If we did, their lives might be great. That said, the Isle of Draco is pretty cool. Most people are lucky if they manage to conceal a whole room from prying eyes. The dragons manage to conceal a whole friggin' island, complete with nice sunny weather, crazy cool architecture, and enough magical power to topple several regimes. They also have a cool method of getting there. Jake and his grandpa get there by inputting a super cheat code on a certain elevator, which then travels underground to the island. That's sweet. Even better about the Island of Draco is that it is more than one secret lair. The universe is big baddie, the Dark Dragon has his own secret lair on an island that is itself a secret lair. We here at Channel Frederator award points for recursive secret lairs. Even if the people that are hiding there are the worst, 
I think humans would do okay if they knew magic was a thing. Thank you for watching Tuned Up's Top 10 Secret Bases and Layers. If you enjoyed this video, you might also enjoy Top 10 Brutal Cartoon Deaths or Top 10 Anime Fights. It's voiced by someone with a lot more experience in anime than I have. Also, in case you haven't heard, Fly Cat Bug Fly, our game where you play as Cat Bug and, you guessed it, Fly, is now completely free to play. So if you haven't checked it out, now's a good time to do so. You can get it on iOS and Android. And remember, Frederator loves you.